that's a change of plan. Oh, oh what a left. left. Lance, Tyson knows he's got him in big trouble. If he doesn't answer it, Richard Steeper cut, and Marvis is hurt. Since the peak of Iron Mike's career, generations of heavyweight boxers have come and gone. However, none of them managed to overshadow Tyson. In fact, despite his losses to Holyfield and Lewis, they couldn't even surpass the controversial Mike in terms of popularity and fame. Today, we'll recall Tyson's first defeat, when he lost to James Buster Douglas due to an unbelievable time count. Douglas wasn't a top-tier fighter. He had been knocked out three times before. Buster Douglas was 29 years old. Prior to the fight with Tyson, Buster was considered an average heavyweight. 30 fights, four losses, three of them by knockout. He had only one shot at a title. In 1987, when Iron Mike's rise was just beginning, Douglas faced IBF champion Tony Tucker and lost by a technical knockout in the 10th round. Tired in addition to being hurt. Right hand again by Tucker. Douglas on wobbly legs, about to go. Tucker presses him. Looks like he's a punch away. You need more than one punch, Barry. He's coming up the left hook. There was a left hook there. And a right behind him and another right. Douglas is in deep trouble on the ropes. Almost halfway through the ring. Buster embarked on a six-fight winning streak, defeating former champion Trevor Burbick. Fight. I think he's won all four of the first four rounds. But Burbick is trying to pick up the pace a little bit more here. Like he's ready to go. James is going to attack now. And he is. He's getting with some real good shots right now. Decision, James Buster. And future champion Oliver McCall along the way. Two significant victories earned Douglas another title shot, this time against the monster Tyson. But everyone was convinced Buster was an easy meal for Mike. Before the fight, the contender was ranked only seventh in the ring's heavyweight rankings. No one took him seriously. In general, Douglas was highly motivated and entered the fight with a decent record, 35 fights and 29 wins. However, the contender's psychological state raised questions. Prior to the bout, Douglas's mother had passed away from a stroke and his pregnant wife had been diagnosed with a malignant tumor. The boxer himself had been hospitalized due to a severe bout of flu just 10 days before the fight. As for Iron Mike, by the end of the 1980s, he was already a star. The undisputed heavyweight world champion who had won almost all of his fights by knockout. Tyson was no longer a modest young man by that time. The boxer was consumed by fame and big money. But as it often happens, there was a flip side to the coin. Even the intimidating knockout artist's successes began to tire the audience themselves. Ticket sales for Tyson's fights declined because not many wanted to pay a hefty sum to watch two three rounds and then head home due to another quick Tyson victory. In such conditions, Mike closed out 1989. However, the boxer himself probably didn't care much. Most of his time was spent at parties and in the company of ladies of low social responsibility. Tyson had essentially abandoned his training. As a result, his promoter Don King had to cancel his November fight against the undefeated Donovan Razor Ruddock. King cited Tyson's illness as the reason, although, as Tyson later admitted, he simply didn't want to fight or train. So the next world champion bout was scheduled for 1990. Don King, having a rough idea of Tyson's condition, chose an opponent who was no more than an average fighter, the seventh-ranked WBC contender, James Buster Douglas. Thus, the latter actually saved Tyson, who missed the chance to fight Ruddock. The fight was supposed to take place in Tokyo, according to King's plan, 
This would guarantee much higher sales. After all, in the land of the rising sun, they definitely wanted to see Tyson. Tyson didn't learn any lessons from the cancellation of the autumn 1989 fight. Preparation for the showdown with Douglas was also essentially falling apart. Mike didn't resemble himself even when he entered the ring. There was a lack of ferocity in his eyes, which was present in previous fights. It seemed like his thoughts at that moment were not in Tokyo Dome. Buster, on the other hand, came out fully charged. His family problems had only fueled him. He wanted to seek revenge. In the eyes of Tyson's previous opponents, fear could be read, but Buster didn't show any. Tyson attempted to start the bout in his usual fashion. Mike moved forward, trying to get into his comfortable close range. But Douglas didn't flinch under the champion's pressure. The challenger began countering his opponent with stiff jabs, noticeably disrupting Iron Mike's aggression. Gradually, Douglas himself started to take the initiative and was no longer afraid to engage in combination work. When such a scenario repeated itself in the second and third rounds, it became clear that Tyson would have a very tough time and Douglas might be having the best fight of his life. Each round started with Tyson's active movements, but with each round, his periods of activity diminished more quickly. Mike's situation was becoming precarious. Buster expertly used his jab, powerfully, precisely, and accurately. He sparingly used his strong right hand, but at the right moments. Thanks in large part to his jab, the challenger gained the main strategic advantage. In the fifth round, the champion's left eye was swollen shut due to a hematoma. Another problem for Tyson immediately surfaced. His corner wasn't prepared for the fight. His trainer, Aaron Snowell, hadn't even bothered to have an iron and ice ready in case of cuts. They tried to treat Mike's facial injuries with a medical glove filled with icy water. There's a good uppercut inside. Douglas really letting go here with some punches. And Tyson looks quite loved. He built it with right hand, jabs, uppercuts. He got caught with a tremendous uppercut in that one. And there was, uh, there was no doubt, he was shaking at least twice in those three minutes. Well, there you see that. Well, again, behind that. Great right from Douglas. Oh, that's a good left hook from Tyson this time. And now Douglas, for a moment, looked wobbly, didn't he? Because that one landed. In the fifth round, the champion's situation was further complicated by an issue with his eye, which began to close after a precise attack from his opponent. However, despite these developments, the champion still had a chance for a favorable outcome. He's hurt by that. And we thought Buster Douglas might be on his way up this ever thickening plot. He's going to throw up next the challenge we've seen from anybody. There we go, the end of the fifth round. Okay, here we go. For round six. That's a good run. But I must say on my school call, Douglas was coming up a good run into this fight as well. At uh, the end of this round, maybe we'll bring in a to see what he's making of it. Oh, there's Tyson trying to get him with the left hook. But again, the timing wasn't...
Two of the judges, by the way, from Japan. That's another nice right from Douglas on the left foot as well. Tyson didn't look good in training. He took him with a pitch of salt. We heard he was floored by Greg. This time, mysteriously, Tyson just hasn't been able to. After the halfway point of the bout, Douglas also noticeably tired, and in the eighth round, Mike seized the opportunity for one of his signature moves, the uppercut. Hello now, Douglas. Tyson wants to cover up on the ropes. Watching one of the big sensations here. Tyson's eye, the left eye, is closing now. And he looks over, he's got Douglas with that punch. You're watching coming now. Wham. Oh, right uppercut. What that a shot like that was. That must have been like the oak tree trunk. Tremendous uppercut. And it was Douglas's very good fortune that the bell came right on. Now, now we'll see how he recovers from that one. He wasn't up at nine, was he? He was up at 9.9, .9, I think. If you closely examine the video, you can count that Douglas was on the canvas for at least 12 seconds. It's also evident that the timekeeping of the ringside timer and the referee's count differed by two seconds. So, even in such an unfit state, Tyson could have potentially won the fight. In reality, it was simply the referee's incorrect count that saved Douglas. Regardless, during the break between rounds, James recovered, while Mike seemed to be even more fatigued. This segment of the fight belonged to the challenger. Stop it before the bell. So, has Douglas had time to recover? Tyson, now, but you have to add it to him. That's part of what being a champion's all around. Turning it around and look at this flurry now. And now Tyson's in trouble. That's a great right from Tyson. Now Dundee, Tokyo Doe. Yet. Oh, it's another! Tyson is in trouble! Staggered on the ropes! Sensational flurry from Douglas and Tyson! Surely he can't take too many more of these! He'll need all his fighting heart here now! My round score, but how would you have it at the moment, you think? Right now, I think Douglas is winning the fight. I think Douglas is throwing more punches, and uh, when Mike Tyson rocked Douglas, Douglas is able to... Is it really that Tyson survived that round at all because I thought he was on the verge of going? Well, he's, he's showing determination. He's showing what it takes to be a champion. You have to be able to... The climax arrived in the 10th three-minute interval. Closer to the middle of the round, Douglas started throwing light jabs. Tyson didn't react and simply absorbed the attacks. Having lulled Mike with a jab to the front, Douglas unexpectedly delivered a powerful right uppercut that rocked the champion. Following that, Douglas unleashed a flurry of punches that sent Tyson to the canvas. Then another right, then another left, and it was good night. The champion tried to get up. First, he bit his mouthpiece and attempted to rise, but all these efforts were in vain. In this way, Douglas secured victory with a brutal knockout, still regarded as one of the most sensational upsets in boxing history. Tyson could take. Let's have a look at the punches that did it. Set him up with the jab. There's the right uppercut. I think that did a lot of the damage. Then the left hook. 
then another right, then another left, and it was good night, Mike Tyson. Ladies and gentlemen, was a sensation. It's no doubt about it. And I thought it hard, and I have sat through a few fights. Anyway, champion of the world, James Hudson Douglas. You know, and 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 and. I was ready for it. I was aware. I was aware of everything. You know, I was totally aware of everything. And Dad, this one is for you. I love you.